Hi, my name is Danielle Matus, and I'm here at Caring Medical Florida sharing with you a recent case that I saw of a patient with chronic thumb pain. So this patient was a 71-year-old male, and he had had thumb pain for more than eight years by uh, the time he came to our office, and his goal was simply to relieve pain with exercise. You know, obviously we wanna stay active, we wanna stay exercising, especially as we get older, but that becomes very challenging, right, if you have a joint that chronically hurts. So most of this patient's pain was right kind of at the base of the thumb. That's called the CMC joint. Very common location for pain, very common lo location for um, osteoarthritis to develop. We did a motion x-ray of this patient. So we call it a DDR or dynamic digital radiograph. You know, motion x-ray is a little easier to say, where we actually have the patient move the joint under x-ray so we can actually see what's going on. So this is the patient's x-rays. It's slowed down to about 50% of his normal movement. But you can see here, like way down here is the CMC joint and you can see it kind of shift a little bit out of place as he's moving it. I'm gonna play that again. Okay, so if we look here, you see how it shifts, yep, and then comes back up here, and then as he comes down, it shifts down a little bit and comes right back up. Yes, the joint is arthritic, we can see that. We, he's reduced the space there, he's starting to get some bone spurs, but only in this motion component can we actually see that it's moving too much. It's actually an unstable joint. I like ultrasound too, I have a little bias towards ultrasound, I love it, so I did an ultrasound as well. This right here, this and this, those are his bones that make up that CMC joint. And typically, like if I had ultrasounded someone that was 20 that didn't have any arthritis, you know, we'd see probably more clear, defined uh, white lines of these bones. But when there's arthritis, you see, I, I call it jaggedy, that's not a medical term, but kind of jaggedy cortical irregularity changes in the bone from arthritis. But this is the joint space right there. And I just kind of tug on the joint. You can see how it opens and closes, opens and closes, right? Opens and closes. That's another way that we can determine if a joint is unstable. So a lot of times I'll do the ultrasound and the x-ray together to put kind of all the pieces of the puzzle together to determine is this patient a good candidate for prolotherapy, PRP? If they are, what does that treatment plan look like for this patient? Do we need to incorporate some bracing with exercises? Do we need to do some certain kind of therapy rehab things? What all goes into getting this patient better? In this patient's case, because he has the arthritis and because his joint is unstable, I recommended PRP and dextrose prolotherapy simultaneously to help regenerate tissue and tighten the ligaments and recreate stability in the joint. This patient specifically wants to avoid cortisone. We know that, yes, cortisone can help to get rid of pain temporarily, but it comes at a cost, right? It degrades cartilage, it degrades the joint, it increases the development of arthritis. Surgery was not really on his top list of things he wanted to do either. He was looking for a more natural way to get the joint to heal, not necessarily to get you know the same joint he had when he was 20, let's be realistic, but to help reduce pain, stabilize the joint, and increase function so he can get back to exercise. Some key points from this case. Dynamic imaging, whether with x-ray or with ultrasound, is very useful for helping to diagnose the patient's chronic painful condition. This also allows us to develop a treatment plan. It's very easy to just say, hey, your thumb hurts, let's just inject it with prolotherapy, maybe we try PRP, but I think it's better when we know everything that's going on and we can use all of that information to create a determined treatment plan for that patient. The last thing I want to say is you're never too old to heal from prolotherapy. So patients ask me that a lot, you know, like this patient was 71. I would not say he's too old, but patients say like, do my cells still work? Can I still heal? And the answer is yes, of course you can. Now, is someone that's 71 going to heal the same way that someone who's five is? No, of course we know that as we get older, our stem cells don't work as fast, but they still work. You know, if a 71 year old got a paper cut, they're not gonna have that paper cut for the rest of their life, right? They can still heal, their body can still repair, and we can use that to help them heal from PRP and prolotherapy.